Welcome to the Detroit News High School Basketball Show. Dave Garicki and I have a couple of great guests right here. River Rouge coach Lamonte Stone and Brent Darby Jr. Go ahead and talk a, a little bit about uh, what you expect for the season and of course Brent Darby Jr. Yeah. because as I recall 20 years ago you had a Brent Darby a who Brent won Darby. a uh, state championship back to back. Yes I did and um, you know this year there's our expectations are, are the same year after year at River Roots. You know, it's, it's state championship. You know, there, there's um, 14 banners, 14 state championship banners hanging in the gym. And uh, each year, we're trying to put the 15th. And so this year is no exception. We came um, about 30 seconds short last season. We didn't hang the runner-up banner at all in our gymnasium. Just, you know, only state championships, only state championships in, our, in our gym. And we're thinking about maybe, because there are so many runner-up um, teams that, that, you know, that were very successful at our school. So we're, there's talk about maybe putting runner-up banners up. I think that Lofton Green has five himself, and then okay. now with my one. So you talk and maybe six runner-up banners. And that was an good. overtime loss to Hudsonville Unity Christian, if I'm not mistaken. No, right? no, we, uh, no we had a chance to, to knock down a three-point shot at okay. the buzzer, okay. and we missed, okay. the, we missed the shot at the buzzer. Okay. Um, so no, the, the semifinal was an overtime okay. uh, uh, thriller that okay. we had to win to get to the state okay. championship game. Okay. Yeah. But you ended up losing by like three points. We lost by three like points, that. yeah. Very, and I give credit to um, UND Christian, uh -huh. a very um, dynamic team, a group of kids that had won state championship in the fall in two different sports, in soccer and in football. Mm -hmm. And that group of kids came together to win in basketball. Mm -hmm. So I give those guys all the credit. Um, you know, I, I thought we had a team that was good enough to win in. I, we, we didn't play, um, I don't think, our brand of basketball that night. I think what happened, um, just hindsight, that the night before, playing overtime, mm -hmm. playing the last game of the night, um, we didn't recover. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's it took tough a lot on, out of you emotionally to come yeah, back exactly. and win a game like that. Exactly. And that's too. tough on high school kids, you mm -hmm. know, because they don't play those type of games mm -hmm. of those mag of that magnitude, you know, the night after you just won a big game. You know, mm -hmm. collegiate guys, NBA guys, they do it, but high school guys don't do that. Brent, what do you know about River Rouge and their basketball tradition? Well, I know they like to win. I'm not used to it, and that's what I want to be a part of. And go ahead and talk about where you came from, where you played your first three years, and what brought you here. Well, uh, my freshman, sophomore, and junior year, I played um, at a school called uh, Garfield High School in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, basketball was one of the reasons I wanted to come back, but it was a lot of family reasons also. So, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And go ahead and talk about having this chance to, uh, to, yeah. co to coach another Derby. You know, um, when I took the job the first time in, uh, I think 2015, um, his mom called me and said, Hey, you coach your high school again? If you're you're coaching high school. You're going to coach my son. You're going to coach Brent. We're going to come back to the rules and whatever I need to do, you're going to coach Brent. And I told her, slow down, slow down. You know, he's at, Brent was at Garfield Heights. And if you know anything about high school basketball, Garfield Heights is traditionally one of the, you know, tougher schools in the Cleveland area mm -hmm. and um, statewide. They do, they do well. Um, so I told him he's at a pretty good, you know, place. He's at a pretty good school, a good coach. Just slow down. Let, let the process take care of safe. And, you know, I get a call. Brent came to our state championship game, him and his granddad. Okay. Um, you know, they just wanted to come and, I, you know, I talked, I talked to mom, my, my wife talked to mom. Backstory, Brent was born um, while I was coaching at Ohio State. Okay. Coaching okay. his dad. People okay. don't know that I coached his dad in high school and yeah. I coached him at Ohio well, State. Well, and of course, I guess we should probably <laughs> say that he led Ohio State to a pair of Big Ten championships yes, he did. too, yeah. right? Yes, Average, he did. what, 18 yeah. a yeah. game his senior year? Brent had and a not only that, in high school, in the state title game, what, had 32 points, yes. six and nine threes? Yeah. So, we're talking elite level player. You're talking very elite level player. So he was born um, while we were all at Ohio State. Okay. So my, my wife did a good job of caring for, you know, Brent's dad and Brent's mom while I'm on the road. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so the fact that, you know, she didn't let me say no. You know, she was bringing the Brent to River Rouge at some point. As long as I was going to coach River Rouge, she was bringing him here. And, um, you know, when he came to that state championship game, I think in his mind, he felt, hey, this is where I want to be. Um, so we talked throughout the spring and throughout the summer, and, you know, he just said, hey, I'm coming. You know, whether you want me to come or whatever I need to do, 
I'm coming. So he's here now, and you know what I try to do is is I want him to be Brent Darby Jr. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to be his dad. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to take all the expectations away from him, and I try to you know allow him to be mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. um, so he's he's done a good job. That probably too much of a good job. I, he's a social butterfly. He's He's come here and got earrings in his ears now, and just <laughs> his granddad called me um, just two days ago and said, "Hey, you're his dad. You, you're the dad. <laughs> uh, you did a good job with his dad. Now you got to do a better job with Brent Jr." So I say, "Okay, I'll take it." <laughs> so how has the transition been for you? I mean, when you walk the halls, you have to see that trophy case, and that trophy case has Darby on it, and it has all the uh, you know the trophies and everything, the basketball. Is it pretty neat, and how has the transition been for you? Uh, the transition has been real good. Um, everybody is, their arms are open for me. Everybody loves me there, so it's been hard still, like, getting with the program. Mm -hmm. like, you know, it's, it's new, you know, mm -hmm. River Ridge and Garfield Heights, two different schools, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Probably run different ways and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, this coach is probably a little bit more demanding than River Roots and Garfield. Like, you know? <laughs> and talk about your position because you are a big guy. I mean, yeah. your your dad was smaller. He's a point guard, six one, whatever, and you're six six. So talk about your game. What do you feel that you do well? Um, so, well, I play a wing forward, sometimes small forward. Um, I feel like I can handle it, shoot it. Um, I feel like a good decision maker. So yeah. And how good can this team be? How do you get along with your teammates? How's everything? Oh, I going? love the team. I love it. I love it. Everybody works hard. Everybody wants to be better. So I want to be a part of that brotherhood just like they were. Mm -hmm. And talk about some of the schedules because um, you were here listening to uh, George Ward and seeing Omar Ziegler and Detroit King is one of the state powers. They made it to the state quarterfinals. So how kind of cool is it to be playing a big game right away before the holidays and stuff? I can't wait. I love the cameras, so I can't wait for it. And, and go ahead and talk about um, what you feel that he brings to the table. You know, Brent, Brent brings size, but he brings a skill set with his size. You know, most guys at, you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six range are more power guys around the basket. Um, but Brent has a, has a nice touch from the three-point high school three-point line. And he's, you know, he dribbles to get to his, his spot on, on the floor, mm -hmm. and he scores from, from the perimeter with the dribble. Um, so he brings a unique skill set for a kid his size. Very good. Hey, thanks a lot for coming. I appreciate it. And I'm going to enjoy watching you play as the season moves on. Lamonte, thanks again. Thank you. And we're back with Lamonte Stone and Legend Jeter. So we're talking about one of the top juniors in the state. and. Uh, Legend, you've grown a little bit since the last time we've seen you. Now you're up, what, 6'8", 220, 225? Yes, sir. Go ahead and talk about that, you know, um, your growth, your development. What did you play at last year? Um, I actually was a, a straight center last year. Okay. And what was your size? How, how tall were you? I was about 6'6". Six, six. I gave myself 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, okay. What would you weigh? Like 2'10". Two, two, so you put on quite two, a bit 13. of muscle then, huh? Yeah, about a good there. 10, 15 pounds. Yes, Do you sir. notice it when you're out there playing? Honestly, I don't. You don't? No. Because you're more of a finesse type of player or what? No, I'm, I'm power. Okay. Straight power. Okay. But, so how do you not notice that you're a whole 15 pounds stronger? I mean, I guess I just get used to it over time real quick, so. Okay. So yes. talk about, you know, how you play because obviously you got great leaping ability. You're mm -hmm. a shot blocker. Talk about what your strengths are. Um, honestly, I've been playing center all my life, so that's like my strength right now. But I'm working to be like more of a wing slash guard. Okay. So I'm working on my ball handle a little more, and I'm trying to perfect my shot. And how has that, you know, worked for you so far? Um, how do you feel, you know, you're at at this point? I feel like it's going to. It's got to work even more harder than what I've been doing, so I can perfect it more. Okay. And you already have a couple of offers. Who are they from? Um, I had three. I had Cleveland State, Miami of Ohio, and U of D. Okay. So the, my um, Cleveland State coach got fired. So okay. Okay. So that offer okay. drops. But obviously, you're going to get a lot more as the season moves on. Yes, sir. Talk about him, Lamonte, what he brings to the table and what you expect out of him this year, Look, especially with more experience. Legend, he's, he's, he's a my, uh, you know, mild-mannered kid. Mm -hmm. Uh, off the court, but you ask him about the, the strength and, and the weight that he's picked up. As a coach, I, I've noticed it with his play during the summer and the fall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the kids are bouncing off him now. As before, 
you know, guys were contesting the shot and maybe blocking the shot or affecting the shot. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Legend with the strength, he's powering through guys, you know, and, and whether he sees it or not, as a coach, I see it. Mm -hmm. And then the, the thing that he's really, really, and, and I'm encouraged for his future because he's doing this is he's working on his perimeter game. Um, he's probably one of our best shooters on the team at 6'8". Uh -huh. um, he's knocked down shots, but he lives in the gym, so it's not, you know, that's not expected. That's something that, that doesn't shock me. It's just natural. Uh, just natural, mm -hmm. yep. And uh, he talked about his ball handling. And, you know, I get on him because he really wants to be a, a ball handler. I say, Legend, you're 6'8", you're not 5'8". You don't have to handle the ball like, you know, you're a 5'8 guard. But to his testament, he wants to be a good ball handler. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I love him as a kid. Everyone knows that. And, you know, I think he's going to, you know, this is his turn now. Mm -hmm. You know, he sat back last year and had a really good year last year. But we had seven seniors, mm -hmm. and I think at, at, at times he took the back seat to those guys, and he didn't have to. Mm -hmm. And you know those guys are gone, and it's Legends team for the next two years. Talk about that. You being like a captain, like a leader. This is your team. Talk about being in that road. Do you enjoy it? Um, last year I didn't start. Um, I played. I was a six man. But seven. you had played. You, really, I, you yeah. had starters minutes. Yeah, yeah I did. Mm -hmm. But I still, you know, came off the bench, mm -hmm. and I was actually cool with that. So. I let the season go by. Now it's my year. Now uh -huh. so I got to step my game up and do everything the series did last year. How good can this team be? Because we added, you did Brent Derby Jr. Right. Talk about him and what he's you know brought to your team. Um, the team, honestly, I feel like if we play the way that we need to play, we'll be great and unstoppable. And Brent, he's an amazing guy. You know, he came. He's a big help for me. He's big, solid. And, you know, it's another big help me out with rebounds and stuff. And I feel like he's be a great part of the team. Uh, obviously, you guys are going to be a top five team coming yeah, into the yeah. state. Talk about some of the other pieces that you have on this um, We, When we talk about River Rouge, and, and I get this from Coach Green, Lofton Green, you know, there's, there's no down years. It's just guys who, you know, may not have played a lot of minutes the previous year. It's your turn. You're the next guy, next guy up. Um, so that's what it is. Uh, Monty Weston is a kid that will play on and off the ball. And after a few games, everyone's going to say, where did this kid come from? But he was a kid that, you know, worked his tail off in practice. He pushed the guys who were ahead of him. And, you know, he's going to have a great year. Um, and then we have another guy, um, Eli, Eli Parrish, who's Micah's younger brother. Micah was a senior last year that went on. He's at prep school now. But, you know, same thing with Eli. You know, everyone's going to say, where, where did all these guys come from? But they were really good players on last year's team that just, because we had so many good guys in front of them last year, that they just couldn't see the minutes that they would have gotten on any other high school team. Um, and then we have another transfer that came in that won't get the attention that, that uh, Brent is getting, um, Keyshawn Devlin. And Keyshawn's parents, uh, his mom in particular, is a, is a Rouge graduate, um, she was a cheerleader on one on the teams that, that I coached before. And um, Keyshawn was coming to Rouge as a freshman. And then with the coaching transition, he decided, you know, he would go to Wyandotte. Um, and Keyshawn wanted to come back. And I told Keyshawn with the new state rules, the only reason I talked to his dad and mom, the only way that you guys come back, you got to move into the city because we're not going to play that game. Uh -huh. So I didn't play him during the summer at all. When we had summer camps and anything, I say, until you move in the Rouge, you won't you won't wear River uniform. Uh -huh. And um, he and the, right before school started, Dad gave me a call. We're in Rouge, so I said I'm coming over. So I did a I did a home check myself on on the new home, and then um, he gave me the the they were living in Allen Park. He gave me the address to the home in Allen Park. I said I'm going to check myself because I. You know, we've been through this with the high school, and I don't want no part of that. So I did the home checks myself, and until he moved in, I told him, you're not playing. And once he moved in, everything was good. Now, go ahead, and Legend, talk about Monday's game. It's a season opener. It's at Eastern Michigan, and you're going up against Imani Bates and the state champs. Last year around Christmas time, you guys beat up them, 25, 30 points. Obviously, that was a different team. You just told me how many guys pretty much graduated yeah. from Rouge. Yeah. But yet, you played a lot. I, I remember you had a really good game in that game, matter of fact. Talk about how exciting it's going to be because that place is going to be packed. And uh, you're going up against the state champs. And 
I mean, Imani, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So <laughs> it can't get any bigger than this, really. Uh, that's true. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm very excited for it. I'm ready for it. I've been preparing. The team has been preparing for the game. And we all excited for it. You know, it's going to be a Soto game. Lights everywhere. And they coming for us because we beat them last year. And Imani, I know he's going to play his best game. We held him to eight points last year. And I know he's going to come out and try to show up. Go, go ahead and talk about this, Lamonte, because uh, what does it do for basketball around here when you got a kid, mm -hmm. you know, he's 6'9", he can handle the ball, he can shoot the yeah. three, he can do it all. And he's a sophomore. Yeah. But his freshman year, and trust me, you know what they had around him. They mm -hmm. had four senior guards, yeah. which really helped him out exactly. a lot. And now he's on the cover of Sports mm -hmm. Illustrated. What does that do for basketball around here for kids and everything else? I'm, I'm a Monty Bates fan. Um, I love the family. Um, I talk to him, his dad, as much as I can, just about, you know, not what's going on now, but, you know, kind of prepare him for, for the future. Um, I even told him, when we held an eight points last year, I told him what we did. I told him what the game plan was and how we perfected that, uh, that game plan. Uh, and I told him that because I want him to get better. And I, I saw him this summer. I asked him, are you working on the things that, you know, we talked about and he showed me he was. And I told him, I'll see when we play you guys uh, this year. Um, but I, I think it's great for the, for the state because, you know, he's assured me and his dad and his family that he's going to stay here his entire uh, high school career. Um, say so there's no need for them to go to the prep school route that some of these kids are going now. Um, and if that's true, then, you know, as long as I'm coaching at River Rouge, I want to play them every year. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about this game at Eastern Michigan. You know, the Eastern Michigan seats 9,000 people. I coached there for two years. And, you know, when I was there, I think our largest crowd probably was 2,500, 3,000 people. So if we can get 9,000 people in Eastern Michigan to see a, a River Rouge Ypsilane Lincoln game on a Monday night, I mean, that just, you know, talks about the excitement and the, the gravity of, of what people expect of high school basketball here in the state of Michigan. So, I mean, I, I love these type of games. This is why I coach high school basketball. Um, next year, maybe we could play them uh, home and away or another site. Uh, I just think, you know, if the, if the high school basketball fans of Michigan want to see games like this, it's our job to present that to them. Now, you guys moved up mm -hmm. a class, right? Yes. So you were yes. playing Division Two, Class yes. B, last yes. year. Yes. Talk about your reasoning to move up, or was it purely based on enrollment? It was purely based on enrollment. Um, really? So yeah. you guys have yeah. moved up? Yeah. And yeah. Our, our superintendent, uh, Dr. Derek Coleman, has, has done an excellent job uh, with our school district. I mean, we're no, dist no, distant, no different from the Highland Parks that have closed or the Inkster that have closed. Um, when I took the job in 2015, we were probably 600, 650 students. And you talking, you know, three, four years later, you know, we're, we're close to 1,000 kids in our building now. So he's done a heck of a job from that standpoint. Um, I don't think playing Division One or Division Two from our standpoint is going to be a huge difference. I mean, you talk about we beat Ypsilane Lincoln by 30 points last mm -hmm. year, and they wind up winning the, the so Division yeah. One title. Mm -hmm. So... Um, from, from our aspect, is that, that doesn't matter to us. Um, the only thing is we've always been a, a Class B school, Division II school, and our, all our championships are Class B championships. So now it's just we got to go win a Division I, mm -hmm. Class A state championship now. I, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's up there with the top teams. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Lincoln is going to be the preseason number one team. They should mm -hmm. be. They want it. They got Bates back, who's really considered the top player in the country, yes. not just yes. for his class, but juniors, senior class, mm -hmm. everything. Yes. And he's got a heck of a point. He's got really a great backcourt because mm -hmm. they got the Braylon Green kid who's mm -hmm. the freshman. Yes. And then they got Keon Henderson who was a starting point guard at Detroit Renaissance yes. and Simon Wheeler. Yes. I mean, he's electric. He's electric. Uh, I, so <laughs> they really are deserving yeah. of that, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you talk about those two. I think what those two will do, they'll take a lot of the pressure off Imani. Because mm. last year, Imani, even though he had some guards around him, he brought the ball up, mm -hmm. he got him in the offense. He did you know, a number of things that kind of wore on him during the game, I thought. Mm -hmm. This year, with those two uh, pretty good ball handlers, I think you could, you, know, you could 
play Amani a little different than you did last year. Mm -hmm. And then Clarkson, I mean, you know, they were really good all the yeah. way through the regular season, yeah. an early knockout victim in the, in the postseason. Yeah. But they got the seven-footer, the Nicholson mm -hmm. kid back, Fletcher mm -hmm. Lawyer. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got their top two guards back. They're mm -hmm. pretty darn good. They're, they're they really make good. A run. They're really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, they mm -hmm. really do have the best, best backcourt. You know, they got mm -hmm. Lauren Bowman who's going to Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. They have the, uh, the Kareem uh, Rozier kid. And yeah. then, uh, obviously, the uh, Julian Roper Julian kid, Roper. right? I yeah. mean, talk yeah. about Julian Roper a little bit. I Not mean, only I, Bowman, but... Let me tell you about Julian Roper. Um, and it's funny how things are. Julian Roper, mom, taught in our school district. At, uh, she was at our, our elementary school uh, and physical prep. Um, when Julian went to Country Day, I think she wound up taking another job in another district. But how about having Julian Roper at River Rouge? <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, again, I love him as a kid. Uh, Julian's at every, when, when Orchard Lake's not playing, Julian's at every one of our games. He was even at the state championship football game. So I teased him at the football game. I said, hey, you know you want to come to Rouge. And it's not too late. You can still come to Rouge. <laughs> um, but no, I love him as a kid. Same thing. I love his family. And I think he's a, he's a exceptional player. I, I think, you know, as, as he still doesn't get the attention that he deserves. And mm -hmm. he gets, you know, you know, I think he has probably four or five uh, pretty solid offers. But I think he's even better than that. Mm -hmm. and, and then you got uh, a couple of outstate, you know, schools, mm -hmm. Benton Harbor. Benton Harbor. They got Scooby, yeah. you know, Scooby yeah. Johnson. He's a heck of a player, maybe a front runner for Mr. Basketball, right? Yeah, I, I, we saw that up close. I mean, we went to Benton Harbor yeah. last year and, I mean, they, they beat us pretty good last year. Um, so, yeah, we, we know how good he is. And they got the 6-1 uh, freshman phenom, mm -hmm. right? Grant yeah. Gondersek. Yeah. I yeah. mean, people have yeah. been wondering what, how is he going to be mm -hmm. when he comes to school, like his older sisters, yeah. who are phenomenal yeah. players, yeah. right? Yeah. And Flint Beecher, right? Mm -hmm. Jalen Terry and Jaylen Ernest Terry. Sanders. Yeah. Talk, yeah. talk a little bit about them, because I remember being at their game last year when they played UD Jesuit went to mm -hmm. overtime, mm -hmm. and I I thought personally UD Jesuit was the best team and, and in the same class. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. Um, yeah, we actually played Flint Beecher last year in the Horatio uh, Williams uh, Martin Luther King Classic, and it was a classic. Um, we jumped on we jumped out on them uh, early, but they fought back and fought back, and 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 Jalen, you know, he's he's a really good ball handler. Um, and he's, he got in the lane and, and scored on us, and, and Jalen's Jaylen's really good. Um, he's a Michigan State commit that decommitted uh, from Michigan State. and I guess Louisville's looking at him yeah, pretty happy at this yeah, point, yeah, too. Yeah. And, and talk about your schedule, because you mm -hmm. not only have Lincoln, but we were talking to George earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, he basically said that uh, you guys are playing them in the Horatio yeah, Williams so, tournament, and you're going to be playing them on uh, the 14th of yeah. Saturday at uh, North Farmington. Talk about that, because not only is that game playing, I, I think Isaiah Jackson, who's played at uh, Old Waterford Redford with the Rocket, and then he went to Spire, and now mm -hmm. he's you know over at Waterford Mott. Mm -hmm. They're in that tournament, too, so yeah. people can see yeah. him. And I think he just signed with Kentucky. He just right? signed with so, Kentucky, yeah. 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 So you talk about our schedule. So we open up with Ypsilane Lincoln. On the ninth, and then a few days later, on the fourteenth, we're uh, in the ratios uh, classic against Detroit King, um, and then after King, that following Saturday, Grand Rapids Catholic Central, who will be one of the powers in Division Two, uh, come to, uh, come to River Rouge. Oh, really? So they yeah. play at your place? They play at our place, and uh, that would be December twenty-first. Okay. Um, so you're talking three of our first four games are going to be really tough games and but you know that I mean we're River Rouge um, and like you, you you mentioned it earlier if, if I'm gonna coach high school basketball it's, it's not for me anymore you know it's for the the state it's for our fans it's for our community and you know I want to bring them exciting games I want to bring them I want to showcase not only River Rouge but I want to showcase other teams across the state and you know that's that's why I, that's why I coach high school basketball. That's why I came back to River Rouge. Uh, now you talked about uh, the excitement of playing Monday, right. but talk about playing that type of a schedule because you never get a break. It's just boom, 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 big time games after big time games. You enjoy that? I mean, if I plan on going to the next level, I got to be prepared for it. So uh, we work hard every day to prepare for this schedule we have. Mm. And you're going to get a lot of looks. I would imagine there's going to be some big time college yeah. basketball coaches on Monday night. Yeah, I probably. talked to uh, Dewan Howard just the other day, and he'll be in attendance on Monday. Um, Bowling Green coach, I talked to Sienna. Yeah, I probably, two or three coaches every day call, and in the last week or so have told me that, you know, 
they'll definitely be there on Monday night. Even the coaches who have games are, you know, hey, can you get, give me the film? You know, I would love to come, but we play that night. But, you know, I just I want to see, you know, Legend. I want to see how he performs against Amani and, you know, how he performs in that atmosphere. So it's exciting. It's exciting. Before I let you go, talk about a couple more teams like mm -hmm. Ferndale because uh, – Juan did yeah. a heck of a job yeah. at, uh, you know, East English. You got Elliott now playing mm -hmm. over, you know, at Marquette. Mm -hmm. and you got DeJulius playing for Michigan. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you think he'll bring to the table at, uh, at Ferndale? Because the Golson kid can play now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think uh, Juan has done a heck of a job since he's been at Ferndale to build that program back to where it was in the, you know, when, when they were good in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and they're Division two. And, you know, I talked to Juan the other day and I told him, you know, Division Two is wide open now. Um, not that, you know, we were guaranteed to win the state championship, but with us moving up to Division One, it opens the door for, for you know, the Ferndales and, and some of the other Division Two schools that are here locally. Um, and he told me he's, he's ready. You know, he's, he's preparing the kids. He, you know, he had a, a pretty good summer schedule. Um, he scrimmaged some teams early on. So, you know, he's ready to take that program to the next level. How was it around town, around school, now that the football team won a state championship? What, what, what are you noticing, Legend? Um, the support that our school has for our sports. Um, there's a lot of celebration going on with the teachers and school work. And the football team, they're just really excited around school. Talk about yeah. that. And do you have any players from yeah. the football team oh, that are going to be helping out? It's funny you, you ask that because we're, you know, they just won Saturday. And, you know, we're trying to figure out that we, you know, there's at least five to seven kids who want to play basketball. But when do you, you know, work those guys out? Or when do, you, you know, they want to take a couple of days off at least, maybe a week. And it's funny you ask that because, you know, I was at Ohio State when they won the national championship. And we had a kid that, play football and basketball. So at that time, the national championship game was on a Saturday. And Monday, he was in our practice. And I talked to him the other day, because I think a couple of our guys want to take a week off or so just to let their bodies heal. So I talked to him the other day just about that process. And um, he was like, yeah, coach, I thought about taking them some time off, but I was so excited after winning that national championship. I was ready to do something else. I was ready to get back I couldn't play football anymore, but I was ready to play basketball. Interesting. So, um, so just that experience is helping me with these kids that mm -hmm. are, that have just got off the football field, and you know now they want to play basketball. But that's a you know that's a delicate situation as a coach because you know as a basketball coach you want those guys now mm -hmm. because you play Monday, but you got to respect their their feelings and how their body feel, and you know if they need a week or two off, you know. I got to allow them to have that week or it's two long off. season for it's you. It's a long season for you. Yeah, yeah. So. Very good. Pleasure for both of you guys to uh, join us. Thanks, Thank Legend. Thank Lamonte, you. Lamonte, thanks, thanks you. a lot. Thanks. And have fun this season. Thank you. Joining us now is Detroit King head coach George Ward and 6'4 junior Omar Ziegler. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining us. Thank you. Hey, George, can you talk about uh, this year's team? Uh, what do you expect on them? And, and talk a little bit about your group. Wow. I think after losing. 80% of my starting lineup last year. It's kind of funny that we're here right now. Uh, but it's really a testament to the work of the young guys. Looks like we're going to start at least four underclassmen. Uh, we move the ball extremely well. I think now we're probably more basketball players now. We were tough as ever last year. Mm -hmm. But I think we had droughts in scoring, you know, as a lot of teams could figure that out. But now I don't think we had that many droughts. And we'll do, we'll do well. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Chauncey Willis will be our point guard, and then obviously Omar, who will play a little bit of everything for mm -hmm. us. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us. I think we'll be one of the best teams in the state of Michigan by the time the season ends, and we'll see what we do. We talk about the, uh, the confidence, the momentum coming off of last year, because you played in front of a packed house at Callahan. I mean, really, you gave uh, Imani Bates and Lincoln probably a, one of their toughest games. I think you held them to seven you know, for 24 from the floor. Uh, is that long run, does that help going into the team, especially we're talking about the returners back like Chauncey Willis and Omar? Well, I, I think for us, it, it gave our, the run gave our younger guys an opportunity to play uh, in big games. And, and the one thing that we always try to do is 
you know, during the course of the game, that's the best time to practice. We always say that. So for us, we wanted to make sure those young guys got an opportunity to make some mistakes, which we knew they were going to do. But getting them prepared for what was upcoming. We knew we were going to have to depend on them an awful lot. So we did that. That gave them a bit of confidence. And I think the summer really kind of showed them what we thought they were going to be. Every day last year during practice towards the end of the season, we would uh, kind of, if we were going over the game plan, we would kind of have our younger guys, including Omar, our, we would have four sophomores on the floor and a freshman go against our seniors. And to honestly say that our sophomores and freshmen were beating them was kind of big for me. And I'm thinking like, wow, okay, we can get through this year. If we could steal one this year. I think next year will be kind of crazy. So uh, we're looking forward to it. I, I think deep down, everybody knew we lost a lot last year, but I don't think anybody really realizes what we're about to bring to the table and how fun this season could be for us. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, uh, Omar, because now being a junior, you're one of the, uh, really, probably the captains, the leaders. Uh, talk about that opportunity for you. Um, it's, a, it's a big opportunity. I mean, I had some good people like Jordan and Antonio Marshall to lead the way. And I mean, I'm just going to fill the shoes, really. And where do you feel that you've improved the most, you know, from last year, like during the summer? Or what, what did you work on to get better for this year? Um, probably my leadership more than anything. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to talk to my guys and keep their motivation high. Talk about that, George, about uh, now having him being a junior and having, you know, this two full years under his belt of experience. Well, coming in as a freshman, our plan was to play him JV his first year. The one thing that we noticed was undeniable is his intensity every day. And, you know, after the first two or three weeks, I had to tell his dad, like, look, man, I know we were talking about junior varsity for this kid, but his intensity was, it was infectious. So after a while, he began being a little bit more vocal. And I challenged him. I said, look, okay, you're, you're leading with your emotions and all of that, but now let's pull the other guys up. Let's talk to them. Let's make sure they understand what it is they're supposed to do. Let's lead by example, uh, not only through your actions, but let's talk to them. And, you know, they receive him very well because he works hard every day. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the intensity that you see in the game, he practices like that. And you know, those guys are his friends. They're his brothers. They love him and he loves them. But every day somebody's going to get it, whether it's verbally, whether it's physically, he's going to go after him. If you don't box him out, he's going to dunk on you. Uh, if you're not willing to fight every day, he's going to be there making you fight. So that helps us as a program, and especially when you've got young guys who haven't had the opportunity to play a lot. Omar's presence, more than anything, has really helped him. Omar, talk about, uh, you know, Chauncey and what he brings to the table, because obviously you had a really good point guard last year. He's moved on. Talk about him and pretty much your chemistry with him and things of that nature. Um, I mean, he brings, he brings everything to the table. He's just another player like me, but, you know, he can shoot the ball, dribble. His IQ is very high. Like, he got one of the best IQs I've ever seen. But other than that, yeah. George, talk about that, because I remember him hitting a lot of big-time three-pointers for you last year. Well, you know, my good friend Lamonte Stone does not want us to talk about that. But, uh, you know, it, I think we did a decent job as a staff. When you think about our assistant coaches, uh, Derek Clark, uh, Joe Mack, Keith Bates, some of those guys and what they're able to do on a daily basis in practice. Chauncey, we can kind of, with Jordan, we allowed him to kind of spot up played the two a little bit, didn't have to have a lot of pressure from a ball handler standpoint. Mm -hmm. I just think physically he wasn't ready to endure the pressures of dealing with high-level teams every day. So now you're looking at a kid who genetically we knew he was going to grow. He's six foot two inches tall right now, and he's, now he's strong as ever. So it sounds crazy for me to say we, we had the best point guard in the city of Detroit last year, but secretly I knew in my mind I, I had the best point guard in the city that was probably sitting down behind him. Mm -hmm. It sounds crazy, but, you know, now we'll move the ball better. The ball will get up the floor quicker, and it'll be spread more. You know, Jordan had to do some things out of necessity because he was such a talented kid, but now Chauncey is going to get everybody involved, and he can score from all three levels. And that's the thing that kind of stands out for him. He can hit the three. He can hit the mid-range. He can finish at the basket, and he can make his, other, his, make his teammates better. So we're looking forward to that, and I'm, I'm just pleased to see how well he's developed within the last 12 months. It's been kind of crazy. Talk about some of the other pieces that you have on this team. Wow. Um, again, uh, you're looking at our, our other juniors, uh, Davin Walker, Jaleel Ward, uh, guys that are going to make you spread the floor. They can shoot the basketball. Uh, each of them have a very hell of an IQ. Uh, Davin is a much better on-the-ball defender. 
but Jaleel is probably our best off the ball defender that we have. Uh, he may lead the city in taking charges this year. That's what we're looking at. And uh, we got a kid that's uh, off the football field. Our, our, our front line is pretty much our defensive ends and linebackers on the football team. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll be physical as ever. You know, we've got to play a couple teams that have some great size. You're looking at Clarkston, you're looking at Rouge. Uh, we got to make sure that we, we have the physicality to play against that. So we're looking forward to it. Antonio Cowan played a little bit for us last year, uh, much more polished now. Uh, as physical as they come. Uh, Dewan Crudup is another kid that's going to play for us, Randy Winans. Uh, Michael Phillip Jr. is a kid that's going to defend for us very well. He can play the passing lane, play the wing, hit some open shots for us. So uh, we're, we're more deep this year than we were. And uh, I think from a basketball perspective, we're a much better basketball team. Talk about uh, early on game because you were talking about your friend Lamonte Stone. Mm -hmm. um, you beat him early in the season last year, and that's when you were talking about Chauncey knocking down some threes there. Eight points in a row. <laughs> Crazy. But you have them again, mm -hmm. December 14th. It's in the uh, Horatio Williams uh, Foundation Tournament at North Farmington. Talk about uh, playing them again early in the season. Wow. Uh, you know, I think I've been watching Stone for a long time. You know, he's done a great job with the program, did a j great job in college as well. Now he's back home uh, doing some wonderful things for the community, for that city. Uh, shout, shout out to Corey Parker and those guys for winning state championship in football as well. Uh, you know, I just love that community, and I, I know, you know, Stone is a, is a legend there, and he should be a legend around this state. It gives us an opportunity to play against a great team again. Um, you know, you don't win a state championship in December. You know, and, and, you know, a lot of people look at our schedule and say, damn, you're playing some of everybody. But I think if you want to win, you know, uh, iron sharpens iron. If we want to be good, we're going to have to play against them, and, you know, hopefully uh, we can get fortunate and uh, get a catch a break here and there and play against a good basketball team. But as it, as it always is between the two of us, it's going to be one for the ages. We played against each other twice, and each game has calmed down to the last 10 seconds. So that kind of lets you know the kind of teams that we both have. Omar, how exciting is to play in those games? Oh, it's very exciting, you know, to, for all the people in the crowds, playing in front of your family, you know. I mean, it just makes you want to play better, you know, playing in front of everybody you know, all your family, friends, teachers, people. Like that, yeah. Now, you've had a couple of offers already, but talk about the latest one from uh, Mississippi State because your uncle, mm -hmm. Ernie Ziegler. Cousin. Is, cousin. Cousin? cousin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, talk about that because uh, that's kind of have to be pretty neat to get that off. Yeah, it's pretty special. I mean, I feel like all the work I've been putting in paid off, you know, just you got to keep working, that's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, George, um, you were talking a little bit earlier about uh, the seeding. Yes. That's in the, uh, the state tournament in districts, right. only in districts. But uh, talk a bit about that a little bit, because right off the bat, you played Cast Tech in the first game last year of districts, and yeah. tremendous game. And, yeah. you know, then you get all the way to the quarterfinals. Talk about the, uh, the seeding. I think the seeding, it, it, it brings about, you know, it's pros and cons to everything. You know, last year you're looking at it where we played Cast Tech, two of the better teams in the city of Detroit uh, play the first night of the district. I mean, you, you, off the rip, you've got an exciting basketball game. So it just adds some excitement. This way, though, it kind of ensures that uh, the two best teams will possibly, you know, if, if barring an upset, play in a district championship game. And I think ultimately a lot of the athletic directors and some of the people around the state would love to see that, you know. So, I mean, it's good on one end. I think for me, though, uh, I just like to lace them up and play. I, I've always said I had the opportunity, just as Lamonte, uh, to win a, a couple as a player. And I remember playing some games the first two or three days of the district, and you're saying, God, if the state, the state champion is going to be tough, tougher than this, this is going to be crazy. <laughs> so, you know, the, the Cavs game was a great one. Now that won't happen the first day. Mm -hmm. Now it'll just make it where you have to play in a district championship. Fortunately for us, or unfortunately, uh, Cavs is no longer in our district. And... Uh, you know, we've been replaced by someone else, and I wonder who that is. So we're kind of going the other way, and uh, we'll see what we can come up with. But I think the seeding will provide something that the state wanted to see. I think it's on a temporary basis right now. We're just taking it, checking it out to see if it's, uh, if it's going to work for us, and then we'll move forward with it. Was it a little shocking when you saw that? No, there's been, there's been speculation. They've been talking about it. You know, uh, that's one of the things that's been high up for the state to talk about, as well as the, uh, the shot clock as well as the number of games. So I think this was an item that everybody wanted to deal with first 
because I think it was a little easier fix than everything else. So we went with the seating and, uh, you know, I just think the Wednesday and Fridays of the districts will be the better game, so to speak, barring an upset. Very good. Thanks a lot, guys, for coming on our show and being a part of it because uh, it's always fun once basketball season here and it's fun to talk about the, uh, the beginning of the season because, uh, I mean, then everybody knows a little bit what might happen down the road. So Absolutely. thanks again, Absolutely. Omar. It's been a pleasure. George, As thanks always, again. Man. Thank you. And thanks a lot for watching this high school basketball preview show and make sure that you pick up a paper when you go to the grocery store or you go to the gas station and make sure you also take a look at us on DetroitNews.com.